Hello folks, Annie from Mountain Crest Gardens here, and this funky friend is Albuca spiralis, also known as frizzle sizzle or the corkscrew plant. Now, this plant is actually a bulb succulent, and it's got this just incredibly fun, curly foliage, and it also produces a really showy, fragrant flower. So I feel like it's a great step up, you know, for the intermediate, let's say, when you're excited to grow an unusual specimen plant, but you still want something that's gonna be a relatively easy house plant. I would say though that its care is seasonally dependent and it's not always intuitive, so go ahead and stick around to the end of the video if you wanna learn how to keep this plant curly and happy all year long. Frizzle Sizzle has a pretty wild growth habit. It's got this rough bulb to it that grows layers, kind of like an onion, and don't be alarmed, they naturally just slough off a little bit over time. And below that, we've got all these thin white roots, but it's really the bulb that helps this plant store a ton of water and nutrients in order to make it through some really long, hot droughts. And it's native to South Africa, and in the wild, it would be outgrowing with its bulb fully underground. But in cultivation, we can plant it with just the top part of this bulb exposed, and it gives it a really cool look. The frizzle sizzle leaves are extremely variable, as you can see, but they do tend to corkscrew tighter when they're getting more sun and less water. And these sometimes get the name slime lily just because if you snap open one of their leaves, you find some slime. And these leaves are basically all green like this, but they do regularly get some dry, kind of brownish tips like this one over here. But they're very simple to pinch off just with your fingers like that. The flowers are a real treat on top of what's already a really cool looking plant. And Albuca spiralis tends to bloom in the spring. It shoots up this really robust bloom stalk, which produces lots of showy yellow flowers. And those flowers, people often describe them as nodding, just because they're really big and pretty heavy. But what's really gonna hit you is their fragrance, because they have this really rich, sweet vanilla scent to them, and you can smell it from pretty far away, even before those flowers are open. Coming from a semi-desert region, this plant really likes a lot of sunshine. It does thrive indoors, you just wanna keep it on a sunny windowsill or under a grow light. And you could definitely put this one outside in say partial sun, just so long as the minimum temperature is staying well above freezing. At this point, we're gonna take a step away from very traditional succulent care and get into some very seasonally dependent watering strategies for this plant. Now, it's April here, but I've done my best to kind of fake examples for you of what you would see your plant doing throughout the year. Now, Albuca spiralis is native to a climate that gets a lot of winter rainfall, but then has very hot, dry summers. So this plant's actually gonna do all of its growing in the winter, and then come summer, it's gonna die back and lose its leaves for a really dry summer dormancy. But have no fear, because come fall, when the, winter, or the fall rains are gonna start up again, and it'll sprout back those leaves. So at that point, you're gonna start watering every couple weeks or so when the soil is completely dry. Then through the winter, it's gonna put on a lot of foliar growth, like these ones growing a lot more leaves. And at that point, you could start fertilizing if you wanted to. So something like a half strength quick start would do the trick just fine, once a month. And then come spring, we have those showy blooms appearing like we talked about. And at this point, the plant is really ready to rest. So in its native climate, come late spring or so, the rains are gonna slow down and then stop. But at home, you're just gonna start watering less and less frequently and then withholding water completely. So you'll start to see those leaves dry out and they're gonna die back completely. So that come summer, you've got something like this. And your job is just to watch over this unassuming little nubbin of a plant and resist watering as much as you can. Caveat, some people actually do water through the summer to force their frizzle sizzle to maintain its leaves. Now, it's not the normal life cycle of this plant, but you can do it. The one problem that can arise from it is that sometimes you can lose the frizzle to your sizzle and these leaves can lose their curly corkscrew look. And that's just because after blooming, 
Sometimes one leaf or all the leaves will completely straighten out like these. And at that point, the solution is to let the plant totally dry out for summer, lose back its leaves, and re-sprout curly leaves come fall. When it comes to drainage, we are right back on familiar succulent terrain. So for soil, we're looking for something that's pretty light and pretty gritty. So a well-draining cactus and succulent mix would be perfect here, just because we're trying to mimic the really rocky conditions that Albuca is native to. And, you know, I also like to top dress this one often just to give it a clean, polished look. And you can even use Bonsai Jack Mix for that, which you can find on our website. And then for your container, be sure that you're picking a pot that has a drainage hole in the bottom. And if possible, something like this unglazed terracotta is really ideal just to help your plant dry out in between those winter drenchings, you know, especially if you're growing it indoors. In my experience, Frizzle Sizzle never has really any issues with pests or diseases, and that's part of the reason it makes such a great house plant. But as with all succulents, the best way to prevent pests and diseases are to have great sunshine, airflow, and drainage in the first place. Unlike a lot of succulents, Frizzle Sizzle here isn't one that you're gonna be taking cuttings of to propagate and re-root but it can get pretty massive on its own after a couple years of growth. And eventually it'll start dividing and it'll produce all of these new bulbs around it, kind of like a tulip or an onion would. And you can either leave all of those bulbs there to cluster, or you can unpot the whole thing, separate them out, and go ahead and repot them to share the frizzle sizzle love. Thank you so much for joining me today on this twisty, windy, frizzle sizzle journey. For more tips to make all of your succulent dreams come true, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. Until next time, happy succulenting.